Hello. First off, I would really like to say thank you to the organizers of this meeting and to all of you for giving me the opportunity to speak a little bit about what we're doing at Ultragenics, um, our ongoing clinical trial for gene therapy for the potential treatment of Wilson disease. And then also wanted to spend a little bit of time really talking about what gene therapy is and really all of the work we're doing to bring this potentially new treatment forward for patients. My name is Eric Crombez. Um, I am the chief medical officer at Ultragenics. I trained in pediatrics, medical genetics, and biochemical genetics at UCLA and stayed on there in a faculty position for a few years before joining industry and did have the opportunity to treat some patients with Wilson disease in clinic. So do have a little bit of an appreciation for what patients are going through and certainly the use of chelators and zinc and the real lack of something new um, for, the, for the treatment of this disease for a very long time. So we're certainly excited about our gene therapy program. Um, we're in the clinic, we're making progress, and we can talk in a little more detail later on in the presentation. So our company was founded in 2010. Um, the mission of the company from the beginning has always been to develop new treatments for rare diseases, first really focusing on inborn errors and in metabolism, but with the growth of the company, we've really been, been able to broaden that reach. And here, um, a very busy slide, but really exemplifies all of the work we're doing. And what we've really tried to do is really set ourselves up in a way that we can really focus on diseases that currently have very high unmet medical need. And then looking in more detail here, this is our gene therapy pipeline within the broader pipeline. So you can see here, we have gene therapy programs at all stages of development. We have um, four programs and pivotal trials. This includes a gene therapy for Wilson disease, we consider this a pivotal trial because it's a single phase one, two, three study, meaning we will move through the stages of development seamlessly without needing to stop for discussions with the FDA, European, and other agencies. So it really will allow us to move through these stages of development quickly and hopefully get this treatment available to the greatest number of patients in the shortest amount of time. These programs, um, GSD1A, OTC, and Wilson are liver-directed gene therapy. We began um, with a focus on the liver, and we really have been able to pull through a lot of these learnings from our earlier program into the Wilson disease program, and that's what has really enabled us to move as quickly as possible. So while gene therapy may seem very new, um, to a lot of you, and it certainly is new for the treatment of potential treatment of Wilson disease, a lot of people have been working on gene therapy for a very long time with a lot of initial focus on safety. And you can see here, it's not just rare genetic disorders, but a lot of cancer treatments and a lot of other diseases that are being targeted for, for use in gene therapy. I think this cartoon really helps illustrate um, how this works, how we deliver these gene therapies to the patient. Um, you can see here with step three, this is being infused into the arm of a patient. So this is really focused on the peripheral administration of gene therapy. So this would include liver-directed gene therapies. But again, what we're looking at with these rare genetic disorders that are caused by um, defects in single genes, um, we essentially take that gene we insert it into a delivery method. Here we are looking at a virus. We'll talk a little bit later on about um, AAV, the type of viral vector we are using to deliver these gene therapies. This is done during a manufacturing process. These gene therapies are then um, infused into the patient. It then travels through the bloodstream to its target organ, in this case for Wilson disease to the liver. It makes its way to the appropriate cells and then starts producing the necessary protein to correct the underlying defect. So again, we have focused um, quite a bit on adeno-associated viruses or AAV. Um, there is a lot of gene therapy programs using AAV, so you may have heard of this in other contexts. It is a very good choice for gene therapy because 
an infection with the normal, while you would catch just in transmission in the community with normal functioning AAV does not cause clinical signs and symptoms. So when you use these as viral vectors, it's not expected to have the same type of immune response as can be seen with, with other vectors. So we really think this is a very safe way to approach gene therapy. And again, looking in more detail here, so um, you see the viral capsid here, AAV capsid, that is the shell of the virus. And then what we're doing is we're taking out all of the genetic material from the virus, the AAV genetic material. We're, le we're leaving what are called inverted terminal repeats on the ends because that's how these gene therapies go from single strand to double strand and start producing functional protein. And then in certain, what you're seeing here in green is the, the gene of interest here in, case, in this case, a functioning copy of ATP7B. And why this is important is because then we really use what, in a sense, what evolution has created, the delivery of these transgenes through AAV capsids, how viruses normally infect and travel to the liver without the ability to replicate or cause other signs and symptoms because we have taken out the genetic material of the virus itself. Again, another cartoon it's illustrating here how the viral vector and transgene here, the recombinant, the recombinant AAV, and in pink, really looking at transmission through the bloodstream after infusion into the patient. It is then taken up by the cell, and that's really that transition from pink to green here, and tra travels through the cell into the nucleus where it is converted from a single-stranded DNA to a double-stranded DNA. It takes shape in an episome. That's just that ring formation there. Um, and that's how the gene starts producing protein, the transporter starts functioning, and and the potential impact for signs and symptoms associated with Wilson disease. This episome is important because the big contrast for AAV, which is considered non-integrating gene therapy, meaning it does not integrate into the rest of a patient's genome, the rest of the genetic material. Um, and that's in contrast to what a lot of people are working on for other diseases, where you have integrating gene therapy, where the transgene inserts into the patient's DNA and replicates that way. We think non-integrating gene therapy is the right way to go today because we need to make sure with integrating gene therapy that transgenes are integrating in the correct places and not integrating into a place that could cause problems down the road. And our goals here are to make sure we really understand the safety of gene therapy, and that has to be front and foremost in what we're doing here. We do think AAV is the right way to go. We have had active clinical trials in the clinic in patients for quite a long time, so we feel we have a lot of confidence that we can safely dose patients with Wilson disease with AAV-directed gene therapy. And then we need to really focus on how are we targeting this AAV to the correct tissues. You'll hear people talk about tropisms and the type of AAV we've selected for Wilson has a high tropism. It has a high affinity and likelihood to traffic to the liver where we need this gene to function. Again, you know, looking at the broader work with gene therapy earlier on, and then here just highlighting that there are over 50 AAV gene therapies in the clinic today. So that allows us to learn. There are shared learnings between companies. Certainly the FDA and other regulatory agencies are learning and we're all learning and growing together. And now really shifting focus for a few minutes to our ongoing clinical trial for Wilson disease. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is a single clinical trial, meaning we will move from phase one which sometimes is traditionally done in healthy volunteers as a separate study to look at safety before going into a patient's affected with the disease. Um, you will sometimes, particularly in rare disease, see phase one, two studies, which are designed to establish initial safety and select a dose for a separate pivotal trial. Because 
of the ability to use copper um, for what we call biomarkers is ability to really look at the effect of treatments and how it's working in patients. And in conversations with the FDA and other regulatory agencies, we feel like we can move through these stages of development without having to stop have additional conversations with the FDA and other regulatory agencies. So why this is important is because this allows us to move through the stages of drug development with the fewest number of patients in the shortest amount of time. And as you well know, there is a burden to participating in these clinical trials. We have to assess patients frequently um, in the clinic, and there's, there's, there's a burden to participate in these clinical trials. So we feel that the best way to make this potential new treatment available to the most patients as quickly as possible is to move through this seamless design here. We talk about this study as two different stages, stage one and two. If it's in stage one, we do still need to evaluate for safety and importantly, select a dose that we'll bring forward into stage two. So for our dose finding cohort, these doses are very similar to the doses we have used in our glycogen storage disorder program and our OTC program. So again, we are able to understand the use of these AAVs, um, the direction to the liver and understand the overall safety here. So a lot of confidence moving into this trial that we can very safely do this. Um, those patients who are randomized or placed into the placebo group will have the opportunity to receive the gene therapy in a long-term follow-up. So again, really having the ability to benefit, potentially benefit from this gene therapy much more quickly than when it will be available because of the time it takes to move through development, seek approval, and then bring the drug to market. We do want to, to the best extent possible, fully treat this disease. So in the clinical trial, we will be reducing standard of care, the use of chelators in copper, and again, following these patients closely to make sure we can do this safely. And again, a lot of this will be on clinical signs and symptoms, but importantly, measuring, measuring copper. With the dosing of AAV, the trafficking to liver, we will sometimes have elevated liver function tests, and this means the immune system is targeting those hepatocytes, those liver cells that have taken up the gene therapy. So to control for that immune response, to ensure that the liver cells with the transgene, with the gene therapy, hold on to that transgene, we will be using a um, oral course of steroids um, to, vent, to prevent that immune system from taking out the gene therapy. Because this is a first in man, our first study to go into humans, um, the FDA did request that we start with adults 18 years of age and older, and this will hold true for stage one and stage two. Once we collect more data in stage one, we may have another conversation about including children, or we will evaluate children in separate studies. Obviously, there is a lot of children under the age of 18 who could potentially benefit from the gene therapy, and we do think it's important to study those patients as well. Um, and then again, as I touched on earlier, the big exclusion criteria, what would prevent you from being able to enroll in this study is the presence of antibodies to this AAV. And again, that's because a patient had encountered AAV in their normal life at some point, they had immune response. And if dosed with this gene therapy, the immune response would quickly um, recognize that and clear it from the circulation before it could effectively get to the liver. So I appreciate this is a very short amount of time to really talk in detail about gene therapy and our clinical trial here. So more avail more information available about these websites. Um, we do appreciate the opportunity to come here and speak with you. We appreciate the partnership with WDA. We're certainly always very happy to speak to individuals or individual groups in educating on gene therapy or clinical trial in the best way we can. Again, very much appreciate the time to come and speak with you today and, and thank you again.